Hey guys, it's Michelle Tam with Nom Nom Paleo, and today is our last Facebook Live cooking demo for the year! Yay! And we normally come on every Wednesday at 5 p.m., but we're not coming on next Wednesday because... It's Ollie's birthday. Yes, it's Ollie's birthday, <laughs> so we're not coming on. But we'll be back January 2nd because then you know a lot of you are either going to go Paleo in January or do a Whole30 or something, and so we will be back to support you. But what we're going to do this week is I'm going to show you how to make the latest recipe on my blog, Nom Nom Paleo. It's my Instant Pot Cowboy Chili, which is an Instant Pot version of the stove top version in our first book, uh, Nom Nom Paleo Food for Humans. And to celebrate the end of the year and thank you guys, um, I'm going to be giving away three Instant Pot Ultras which is the one I'm using here. And this is my favorite Instant Pot model. Um, and I actually emailed Instant Pot. I'm like, hey, can you guys give away three of these Instant Pots to my Facebook Live viewers? And they said yes. They're not a sponsor, but they are providing the giveaway um, prize. And all you have to do to um, get in on the prize is just um, say hello or ask a question during the live broadcast. And then Lauren Wade, our master builder behind the scenes, will randomly pick three winners. Um, and then Owen, my son behind the scenes, is manning the camera, and he will be asking me questions um, because I can't see them. And then Ollie here is going to uh, help me out in front of the camera. So again, this is my Instant Pot Cowboy Chili, which uses um, chuck roast. Uh, so it's a nice, beefy, um, you know, kind of Texas style chili. Um, and it's also kind of like a, I almost think it has kind of mole flavors because I use ancho chili powder and I use some chocolate. Um, chocolate? But I'm going to just set up all unsweetened chocolate, which you actually don't like. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move everything over so you guys can see. Um, and any questions yet, Owen? No, I don't see any. A lot of people are giving Ollie uh, early birthday. Um, oh, yay. Say thank like, you. Thank you, people. Things. I, don't, I don't know how to comment. Okay, say happy birthday to Ollie. Okay, so what I have here is four pounds of chuck roast that have been cut into two-inch cubes. And to this, I'm going to add two teaspoons of diamond crystal kosher salt. Um, if you are using a different kosher salt, use half because Morton's, which is the other um, popular kosher salt, um, that has a different configuration of the crystals. And so using half of that is the same as using two teaspoons of diamond crystal kosher salt. And I'm just going to mix it just because I always mix it with my hands. You can use... Um, a spatula, and I would ask Ollie to help me, but he doesn't like getting his hands dirty. Isn't that right, Ollie? Mm -hmm. All right, so then this, this part you can actually do way in advance. In fact, a lot of, um, you know, chefs and cooking instructors say you should salt your meat as soon as you bring it home, and you can salt it for up to three or four days, and it only makes it um, taste better, and it helps kind of preserve things better in the fridge because you are salting it. Yes? Someone asked what Moda 3 was. What? Moda 3? The thing I'm always having. Oh, it's a store in Milwaukee, right? When we were on tour. Oh, no, we weren't on tour. We were just Summerfest. going for Summerfest for um, Owen, and it's a really cool store in Milwaukee that one of you readers recommended that we check out, and so we did, and then you bought a hat. Also, is there an alternative to uh, the meat that you're using? Someone uh, said that they're going to make this with elk. With elk. Oh, yes, someone. You know what? What's so amazing about this is a lot of people, because I posted this on Sunday, a lot of people have told me, and also in the recipe on nomnompaleo.com, I give lots of other, like, what other beets can I use? Um, because a lot of people have asked. And someone said they used venison, and it turned out really well. I'm sure elk would also turn out really well. So I think if it's something that you've used in a stew before it should work uh someone asked if you have to butcher the roast and cut it yourself or did the butcher do it uh you mean cutting it into yeah, cubes yeah, like, i cut it yeah. myself but if you go to a good butcher they'll do it for you okay so to make my instant pot cowboy chili i have to turn on my saute function um 
And I have four pieces of bacon that I've cut up into kind of little tiny pieces of bacon. Um, they're like half inch little slices. So they look like little mini bacons. Aren't they cute? And I dumped that in there because I'm going to use this to kind of make crispy. You didn't, no, mom, wait, wait. Well, that's what's I know, I know, I know, I know. Don't worry, we're not going to waste the bacon. Um, and so when this is on the saute function, it should eventually start <laughs> getting hot. So we will always ask how, which, there are like a bazillion different models of Instant Pot. Which ones are your favorite? And so I love the Instant Pot Ultra because I can't really turn it to show you, but, well, maybe I can. Here, let me move everything out of the way so I don't, um, so you have to just leave it in the middle. I'm cutting the bacon in half. It's okay. Um. <laughs> So here on the front, I don't know if you can see it really well, but there's like a little display. And so right now it's telling you that it's preheating. And unlike the other models where you kind of touch buttons, there's a dial that kind of spins and selects different things. Um, and some people find that a little confusing, but I actually really like it. And I think once you learn it, it's totally cool. But if you don't like that little kind of, you know, dial... The Instant Pot Duo Plus is my second favorite. I think both of them, when I checked this morning, because I always check on Instant Pot prices and I have a page on nomnompaleo.com where I write which Instant Pots are on sale, but I only write the ones that I like because if it's another one, I don't care that it's on sale. But are, these two models are both under $80 or $90 right now. So are you one of the people who uses the slow co uh, cooker function? And is this the largest Instant Pot that you could get? No, the largest Instant Pot you can get is 8 quarts. Um, I have a 6 quart and it works perfectly well for my family of 4 and we always have leftovers. Um, what was the other question? Uh, is this the largest? Uh, no, that was... That oh, um, do you ever use the slow cooker function? I never use the slow cooker function. So people always ask me, I'm like, no, if you can slow cook something, you can pressure cook it and it comes out better and faster than if you were to slow cook it all day long forever. So I think if you are gonna slow cook something, it's better to use an actual slow cooker. Um, you know, cause I think the temperature control is better, but you should use an Instant Pot as a pressure cooker for sure. Someone asked how spicy this chili was and why not wait for the pot to heat up before adding the bacon? Cause it really doesn't matter. Okay, so, uh, the spiciness kind of depends on your ancho chili powder. So three tablespoons of ancho chili powder is actually okay for our family. But sometimes, so ancho chili powder is dried poblano peppers. And most of the time, poblano peppers are not super spicy. Um, but sometimes there's a random one that is. And so your spice blend might be kind of spicy. Any three tablespoons give it, gives it a nice kick. If you don't like it, you can take it down to two tablespoons. But like Ollie is not the biggest fan of um, spicy, and she's okay. And the reason why I didn't wait until it um, was hot is because it doesn't really make a difference. Um, I'm just cooking the bacon until the uh, fat kind of renders out and they become crispy. But I'm gonna throw it back into the stew. So it's gonna get soft again. Um, it just kind of adds that nice smoky porky flavor um, to the stew. Okay, so Ollie, I'm gonna have you stir this around. And then while I do that, I'm gonna do the other part. Um, so what I have here is one cup of broth and I mix in all of the spices into this. And then I'm also going to add some unsweetened chocolate to it. And you guys are like, oh, that sounds so weird. It actually gives it a really nice depth of flavor. Um, and that's what it is. So Andrew chili powder is used a lot in traditional Mexican cooking. And unsweetened chocolate is also used in moles. And so it's all kind of like, it, it tastes really good together. Okay, so I have one cup of broth here. It's just chicken broth. Um, I have three tablespoons of ancho chili powder. You can do two tablespoons if you don't want it spicy, but this is not super duper spicy. Um, if you don't have ancho chili powder, you can use what, um, at the store it's called chili powder, um, but make sure it doesn't have salt because then it's hard to control for the salt. But the chili powder that you buy at the store is not all chili powder. Like ancho chili powder is just dried poblano peppers. Um, chili powder has chili peppers,
and it has cumin and garlic and onion and all this other stuff. Um, so it'll still taste really good. It won't have kind of the potent, um, you know, depth of flavor if you just use straight Ancho Chili Powder, but it'll still taste good. Just at the end, you can either add a little more cayenne for a little more kick or some other stuff to kind of make sure it tastes okay. Did you, uh, buy, where can you buy unsweetened chocolate and did you make the broth yourself? Um, unsweetened chocolate is found in the baking section of every grocery store. Um, so where you would buy the flour and the sugar and stuff to, you know, um, you know, bake stuff, you can find unsweetened chocolate. And so this is the one I bought. It's by Guitard. And it's just like a, it comes in a box. These are like two ounce um, bars. And so I take half of it because you're going to use one, one ounce of chocolate. Um, but to this, uh, this actually is not homemade chicken broth. I normally have a bunch, but there's a local brand called Roly Roti Chicken Bone Broth that I can buy at Costco for really cheap and is super high quality. And so I've just been buying that. It's only like $4.99 a three cup bottle, which is really good. Is um, this uh, Whole30 compliant? Yes, it is. It is Whole30 compliant. Because everything, there's no sugar, but you gotta like, you gotta scrape a little harder. And <laughs> where do you find your chili powder? Uh, the Andrew Chili Powder, just in the spice aisle. You can find it, like McCormick's makes it. I bought mine at Whole Foods. You can go to Penzi's, you can buy it online on Amazon. Most good grocery stores should have Andrew Chili Powder. Okay, so. and, um, and if not, you can go to a Hispanic grocery store and for sure they will have Andrew Chili Powder. And it will, it'll probably be super, like, super fresh and super cheap. So, um, have you tasted the difference in this recipe making it in the slow cooker versus the instant pot? Uh, you mean, I don't make it in the slow cooker. I either braise it in the oven or I make it in the instant pot. I don't think there's a huge, huge difference. I think oven braising always does taste a little better, but it takes four hours. And this is easy. You'll see me just throw it all together and it'll taste delicious. And um, it, is this uh, the instant pot version in the cookbook? The Instant Pot version is not in the cookbook because I didn't discover the Instant Pot until I think after I wrote that first cookbook because that was back in 2013 and I think I got my first Instant Pot in about 2013 and so it went to print I think in 2012 so I didn't even know about it. I knew about pressure cooking and so I have some pressure cooker recipes in there um, but I didn't know about the Instant Pot. Okay so this is almost done. Again this is one cup of broth. I'm making Instant Pot Cowboy Chili. We're giving away three Instant Pot Ultras to people who ask questions. Um, I have some Andrew Chili Powder. I have some smoked paprika, which gives it a really nice smoky flavor. We have some cumin that also gives it some nice smoky flavor. And a tablespoon of oregano. And so I'm just going to mix this together. And so how is that looking? Is that looking? Looks like bacon. Yes. <laughs> It looks like bacon and it smells like bacon. So we're just kind of um, making sure all of the fat comes out. And so I'm just mixing the spices together with uh, the broth. And then I'm going to add, um, I'm going to shave some chocolate. So this is one ounce of unsweetened chocolate. And I know that because these bars are two ounces and you just break it in half and that's how you know it's one ounce if you don't have a scale. And then all I do is I go on the corner with a sharp... Can you try it no, it's unsweetened, you won't like it. Oh. So you do one corner and then you do the next corner. And so you make these little shavings. And then your chocolate has another point again. And so then you cut down against the point until you have a nice cute little chocolate bar again. And then you can do another corner. This is just how I do it. I don't know, like, this is the fastest and easiest way for me to shave chocolate is I just keep on making these corners and it makes chopping chocolate really fast. How many does this serve? And could you try dried poblanos and put them in a blender? Oh, also, Probably. could unsweetened cocoa powder be substituted? Ah, so I looked that up because I knew people would ask that. So unsweetened cocoa powder, the difference between unsweetened chocolate and unsweetened cocoa powder is unsweetened um, chocolate also has cocoa butter in it, which is like fat. Um, 
So cocoa powder is just the cocoa powder part without the um, cocoa butter. So it's more potent in the cocoa-ness. So if you do use cocoa powder, you would have to use a little bit less than what is asked for um, in the unsweetened chocolate. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a sloppy spoon to remove these. And someone had asked me also, like, how do you, um, what if you don't uh, wanna add bacon? And you don't have to add bacon. You just skip this part. Um, it just won't be quite as, um, you know. Like someone also yeah. asked if you uh, drain the bacon grease, and I guess that's what you're doing right now. I am leaving the grease in here because I'm going to be sauteing some onions in here. Um, I'm bacon. You can have a little bit of bacon if you want. Can you put a little bit on the plate? Mm -hmm. No, you can just pick it off here, but don't pick all of them, okay? Um, but if you don't have any bacon, you would just add some avocado oil or olive oil or ghee um, to your Instant Pot, and we'll do this next step, which I'm doing now, which is... Um, so I just took the little baking bits out with a slotted spoon. I have one medium onion that I diced up that we're going to pop in here. Also, we're sauteing. And so we want to soften this, and we want to kind of take up all the brown bits on the bottom. Uh, do you have a resource for turning slow cooker recipes into Instant Pot recipes? Uh... You can Google. It's not always super easy. Um, I think I try, like when you convert a slow cooker to an Instant Pot recipe, it all depends. Um, I, I have tried to convert a lot of my slow cooker recipes on the blog into Instant Pot recipes. Like originally, my Kahlua pork recipe was a slow cooker recipe, but now I only make it in the Instant Pot um, under the pressure cooker mode. Um, and uh, it, it takes a little finesse. It's not just like you dump it in and it's the same. Because I think I always try to minimize the amount of liquid that you put in Instant Pot because um, there's no evaporation. Um, and a lot of the ingredients will release liquid. And so you just don't want all the flavor to be diluted. So this is, I'm going to, I threw in my onion. I'm not going to cook it for a ton of time because point of having an Instant Pot is to try to throw things in and kind of get the most bang for your buck. And so I added two tablespoons of tomato paste. Tomato paste adds a lot of depth of flavor. Stop eating all the bacon. So uh, speaking of bacon, someone asked if you could not uh, just brown the onions and bacon together. Uh, you can. Yeah, it's up to you. I mean, but I think like Ollie really likes eating the bacon by itself. Um, I don't know that the bacon will brown as well if there's onion in there because onion releases a lot of moisture. But again, you're dumping it back into the stew, so it doesn't really matter. But I think once it's been crispy and dumped in, it's different from kind of like soft bacon being dumped in, if that makes any sense. Um, but if you leave it out, again, it's not a huge deal. Um, it'll still taste really delicious. Um, and so we're just... You know, mixing this around. Oh, so this chocolate right here, I'm gonna add this to my broth that has been mixed with all the spices. Uh, someone asked if you could just omit chocolate entirely? Uh, probably, probably won't taste as good. Um, but I think it really does add a really tasty deliciousness. Everybody who has made it like this way, I mean, yes, you can leave it out. I'm sure it'll still be tasty. But you should try it the way the recipe is written. Uh, there are so many questions. Neither Lauren nor I can uh, <laughs> go through all of them. All right. So I stirred everything together. Um, and this is not very much. You see it's like maybe a little bit over a cup. So now I'm going to just dump. Let me just double check that I have my recipe. I'm doing it the right way. Da -da -da -da. Oh, I have to get my lime juice. I knew there was something missing. So I'm gonna go grab a lime. Stop eating all the bacon. Sorry. So I while you go and get the lime, there are so many questions. Do you serve this with anything? Ah yes. So in my recipe post, I actually um I actually have that as one of my like tips 
He's like, what do I serve with this, this with? And so you can totally serve this with, I always just serve it with um, roasted vegetables because that's just what um, I like to do. But you can serve it on cooked spaghetti squash with cauliflower rice, um, all sorts of stuff. Um, do you, do you have a hard time eating, do you have a hard time getting your voice to eat paleo? Do I have a hard time getting you to eat paleo? Yeah, I, I did not eat we that. We can eat well. it because it's the only thing we can eat. Yes, they have to eat what I make. Okay, so this, I'm going to add, um, four pounds of that salted chuck roast right into the Instant Pot. And a lot of people notice that in my recipe book, for the stovetop version, I browned the beef, and in this one, I just dump in the salted beef without browning it. And they're like, oh, does it make a difference? And it doesn't really make a difference. And I found this out after I wrote that cookbook, because there was a rest, there was an article in the New York Times by Doc Willoughby, who used to work for America's Test Kitchen, that basically said that they did all these tests, and they... Um, browned the beef, and then they didn't brown the beef, and they did a blind tasting in this um, stew recipe, and no one could tell the difference. So after I heard that, I was like, I am not searing the beef, because that is just an extra step that I don't want to take. So I'm going to add the broth that has all of the spices mixed in and the chocolate. So I'm just going to pour that in. So what instant pot size do you use the most? Six quart. I use six quart the most. I think unless you are you have a giant family or you just make huge, huge batches, a six quart should be more than adequate. Like this fits four pounds of meat. Four pounds of meat should be able to feed, I think, eight people. Um, and, for and, sure. Uh, wait. wait, sorry. Uh, how many times do you make a recipe before you decide to put it in a book? Sorry for my bad No problem. Today. I... I Ask you guys, how many times do I make a recipe? Over and over and over and over. Like too many. Too many times. Um, ah! ah! I have quick reflexes. Um, and an overflowing dish rack. Hmm. I make things at least three times. Um, even if I get it right the first time. Um, but like this one I made a lot. Because I had to make a bunch of adjustments um, to the Instant Box. So to this... I mixed in the broth. This is the Instant Pot Cowboy Chili. Recipes on the blog and in the app. I'm going to add have I um, some garlic. garlic. Yes. Oh, yeah. I have to add that in. Holly, stop. Sorry. It's okay. Do you trim the fat off of the beef? Uh, I trim a little bit of the fat just because there's fat um, in the, you know, should be marbled in there. Um, and sometimes if it's like a big blob, I do. But it's not because I'm afraid of fat or anything. I just, I just do. Um, all right, so I'm just going to mix this all together. Again, you just want to mix it so that all the meat is coated and that there is liquid touching the bottom of the Instant Pot because sometimes, especially with the newer Instant Pots, it'll have like a, a burn error message because the newer ones, anytime something scalds on the bottom, it has that error message, so it's super sensitive. So I'm gonna also add juice from half a lime. And if you saw, I cut my lime the way I always tell you guys how to do, which is basically, um, I cut uh, perpendicular, no, parallel, <laughs> parallel, parallel to these two poles, um, so that there's tons of surface area, so when I squeeze it, a lot of juice comes out. Because if you cut it the other way, normally limes don't juice that easily. Could you use minced garlic instead of pressed? Uh, this is minced garlic. I mean, the garlic press just minces it. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can chop it up by hand if you like, but I like just using my garlic press. Okay, so I'll just mix this really well. Dump in the bacon. Take one last bite, Ollie. And is this freezer friendly? Totally freezer friendly. In fact... The one that I have already made to show you, I froze and I thawed. I reheated in the Instant Pot because I actually think whatever you make in the Instant Pot reheats really well in an Instant Pot. Um, and so I just dumped here. I'll, I'll bring that over when it's done. So all I have to do here, so that's all mixed together. 
I'm going to put the lid back on. And then I'm going, actually I'm going to move this. Let me trade places with this. Oh, uh, accident. Uh, oh. Wait, wait, oh, jeez. It just smells louder than one. Um, okay, here. Okay. No, turn it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's move this. Um, huh. how different is an instant pot from a regular pressure cooker? Uh, not super different. Um, I think if you have a regular pressure cooker and you're super happy with it, sorry, I'm just cleaning up. I have my cilantro and a little um bowl of water, and it's spilled all over on my instant pot. Or yeah. Um, but if you have a regular pressure cooker, um, you can use that instead. Um, the only difference is a stovetop pressure cooker normally cooks at 15 PSI and an Instant Pot and, and other electric pressure cookers, except for the new Instant Pot Max, which I don't think most people use. These cook at only 11 or 12 PSI. And so... A stovetop one will cook a little bit quicker, but only maybe 10% quicker. So in most cases, it doesn't make a big difference. Like you don't have to adjust. All right. Um, oh, right. So for this, I'm not going to move it too much. I'm going to set this to cook um, for 35 minutes under high pressure. And I will leave it be. So this is something where you can like cook it and walk away and it'll depressurize on its own and it'll keep warm until you get home and it's amazing um and so i have one that i told you guys that i had made earlier because i knew i would be making when we were cooking this to shoot photos and i knew when i demoed it on Facebook Live that I would have to have them ready because nobody wants to stick around for an hour and just watch us gab. Okay, so this I froze and I thawed and then I dumped into my Instant Pot. But what I like about stews that you, um, you know, eat later. Oh, and a lot of people don't know that the Duo model and the Ultra have these little holes in the lid where you can prop up the lid instead of finding some crowded place to deposit the hot lid. Also, someone asked if there was a timer on the instant pot. A timer to like yeah. delay cooking, delay start. So there is, but I never use it. I just, I just cook it. All right, well, let me grab this cilantro. That maybe and you'll like count down like from once you like start it. Yeah, and it'll keep warm. So even if it cooks before and it's finished cooking before you're ready, it's no big deal because it'll just stay warm, just like this. Because I dumped this in to reheat and I reheated it like at four minutes under high pressure. Yeah, uh, from frozen, correct? No, I thought at first. Okay. I, I could I could have dumped it from frozen, but so I'm not smart enough to um, freeze um, in containers that fit exactly. Like there's some people who actually buy special containers where they freeze their stuff. And so then when they thaw it a little bit, it slides out and it fits perfectly into an Instant Pot. And I was like, that is genius, but I don't have those containers. So because I don't, I thaw it, and then I can take off the little fat cap that forms because um, again, there's still tons of fat in this meat, but I think my kids don't like super greasy um, stews. And then I dump that in here and I cook that for four minutes under high pressure. And someone asked um, the, the question about instant pots and explosions. They don't explode. Well, I mean, an instant pot is pretty foolproof. Like, they have tons and tons of safety um, mechanisms. Um, and, like, all these different release valves will release before anything happens. But, you know, I mean, it is cooking under pressure. You just have to follow instructions. But I have not heard of one. And I think... There's so many Instant Pots out there in use right now that if there was an Instant Pot accident like that, like people would know and it would be this giant scandal. And I haven't heard of one. Um, and I've used many for many years and I've been very happy. Okay, so this is all ready. 
The meat is fork tender. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna scoop it into a serving platter. Oh no, there's water everywhere. Oh. I'll clean that up later. Also, um, is the Instant Pot Ultra the best version of the Instant Pot? In my opinion, yes. There is a Wi-Fi one, which I don't use because I don't use the Wi-Fi function. Um, there is also, oh, um, like the Lux I don't like because they don't have the lids that fit <laughs> into these little things. The reason why I like this one a little bit, I, I do like the Dual Plus a lot. So these two are my one and two. Um, it kind of depends on who you're gifting it to. If you're gifting it to someone who's not very um, technical and won't be able to learn the little dial, um, you know, having a little, you know, just being able to press what you need to do may be your best bet. But the Instapet Ultra has like a better release valve where the button to release the pressure is actually separate from the valve itself, whereas this one, in order to release the pressure, like this one I didn't because I just left it alone and the pressure released on its own so you don't have to deal with it. But if you had to do a quick release, you have to turn it, but this thing you're turning is also where all the hot steam comes out, which can kind of be kind of scary for people initially. Um, but it's not that bad. So what is your favorite Instant Pot recipe? And is it okay oh. to leave food in the Instant Pot until you get home? I think it's totally okay to leave the food in the Instant Pot as long as it's on the keep warm function um, because it's cooked under high pressure, you haven't introduced any bacteria in there, and it's kept at a temperature that prevents um, bacteria from uh, growing. So I think, yes, it should be fine. I do it all the time. Okay, so this is the Instant Pot stew. The meat is super fall apart tender. And then you can serve this with a bunch of different garnishes. Um, if you are not paleo and you're primal or keto, you can serve this with um, like cheddar cheese and sour cream. Um, if you are dairy free, like I am, um, because I'm lactose intolerant, uh, you can serve it with um, some diced white onions and here i'll show you but i'm gonna I'll, I'll decorate it and then i'll also have my kids taste it because i know people are always like what does it taste like do the kids like it and so you will see all right so i also like to add thinly sliced radishes because for all brown stews which let's let's be honest almost all instant pot food is ugly and brown and if you're gonna have to put it on the internet or on social media, you need little things to make it really pretty. And so like these little thinly sliced radishes make it pretty, along with um, like cilantro. Okay, so again, I'm making my Instant Pot Cowboy Chili. Three people are gonna win an Instant Pot Ultra, which is the one that's cooking over there. And all you have to do to enter is just, you know, Say hi. It's that easy. And it's all a thank you for tuning in um, all year to our Facebook Live cooking demos. So this I'm going to throw on top as well. How so, many does this serve? Oh, so it's four pounds of meat. I think I just put six, but it's like six humongous servings. Like for sure, I think you can serve like eight. Oh, and you can also... Um, have uh, some lime wedges with it, and I'm going to cut some white onion, but these are all nice and pretty garnishes. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, one sec, I just need to find um, them. Uh, does the Ultra have a yogurt function, and have you used yes. it? Yes, I have not used it. I know a lot of people who do use it because they like making their own yogurt. Um, yeah, it has yogurt, it also has a sterilized function, there's a cake function. I mean, they have all those different functions. I don't use those functions because most of them are just, um, you know, just different preset times for cooking something under high pressure. And sometimes I don't cook it the way the preset wants it. So I just always pick pressure cook 
and then um, use the time that I have predetermined. Also, someone asked what made the Instant Pot Ultra a better model. Uh, it made the just little things like if there is a huge price difference between the two, I'll just go for whichever one is cheaper, and that's what I tell people because I think they're both pretty comparable. But the Instant Pot Ultra, I can't really turn this one because this one's cooking. It has a um, a fancy display because the other ones don't have this display, and it basically tells you where you are in the cooking process, like it's in the preheat mode. Um, because sometimes you're like, gosh, this thing seems like it's cooking forever. When has it reached high pressure? Um, and so the other models will start counting down as soon as it reaches high pressure, but that could be like 10, 15, sometimes 30 minutes, depending on how full or cold the contents are. But this, it tells you it's in the preheating mode. Like this is still in the preheating mode, and then pretty soon it'll be in the cooking mode. Um, but there's this fun little um, display. It has a fancy dial so it can um, toggle between all of the different, um, you know, things you can do. But this release valve is really kind of my favorite thing because there's a button that is separate from where the steam actually comes out. Um, so when you're releasing stuff manually, um, you know, you're not super close. Whereas on um, the other models, the release valve is the same thing as the thing that's releasing all of the liquid. Or the, not the liquid, all the steam. Should we get winners? Yes, we can get, what time is it? Five, oh yes, let's get winners. This is plenty of time. So Lauren is going to pick three winners that are going to win an Instapot Ultra. Um, Instapot is providing that. Um, they aren't a sponsor because... I buy my own things and I have my own opinions, but I did email them and say, hey, can you guys provide um, Instant Pots to my Facebook Live um, viewers? And they said yes. So three of you will win one, and all you have to do is just comment, um, and we will pick you. And I don't know that it'll get there before Christmas. It probably won't, but it'll be perfect for your whole 30 or your 21 day sugar detox or whatever challenge you decide to do in January. All right. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of onion that you use for uh, um, way back. Oh no, like the one that's in the, the chili, it doesn't matter. You can use yellow, you can use red, you can use white. Um, but when I'm using it as a garnish, I like to use the white onions because um, I think they're sweeter. Um, so I have white onions and cilantro. So I'm gonna make a little, I'm gonna make a little platter for you guys. Because people always wanna know, will they eat it? And you can tell them honestly what you think. Just be a little piece. Do you want anything on it? Do you no. want any, I know. Oh, he doesn't like anything on his. Just a little fork. Oh, and do you want some white onion and cilantro or lime on yours? Sure. And then I'm going to serve this, like, after I get off, I'm going to be making um, some roasted vegetables with this. So, and tell us what you think. You should just be able to bite it. It's super tender. Just bite it. Ollie. Ollie. Well, I like cutting it up. No, you have to. Just bite it. Oh, good. Like. Is it too spicy? I'm going to have some. water all over the place. It's going to eat right out of the pot. And so I also have all of these suggestions for what to do with leftovers in my recipe post, post, post on nonmonpaleo.com. So you can use this to stuff like paleo tacos, like lettuce tacos, or using siete uh, grain-free tortillas. Um, you can use it to stuff like a southwestern omelet. You can make a frittata with it. Um, you can make a soup with it, like after you guys have eaten it um, and there's not enough meat to serve the whole family, you can add more broth and dilute it and then add more vegetables and make kind of a southwestern soup. Um, uh, we have winners? Mm. Yay! All right, so our winners for the Instant Pots, is that what it is? Three people are gonna win the Instant Pot Ultra. Right, not but... the one I'm cooking in, brand new one. So the people who won are Heather Turner, Danielle Metzger, uh, and Judy Davis. 
So Judy, Danielle, and yeah. Heather. Yep. Oh, see, that memory is not failing. Yay. So just uh, send me a DM or Lauren will reach out to you um, to the page. And we will get your mailing address, and we need a phone number because I think Instant Pot ships via FedEx, and so they need phone numbers. But thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in all year. Thank you, Ollie. Thank you, Owen. Thank you, Lauren. Um, we will be back next year, January 2nd, when everybody is turning paleo for a month. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you.